All right, so continuing um, with, our, with our task that we need to do at the beginning of every day, we need to bring the site back to life. At the end of every day, I save a copy of my work so you can use my files or you can use your own. Using my files is that we copy from the network folder. So before we start to set up, the first thing we do is we start WAMP server. So everyone's computer should be on. You want to double click WAMP server. Go ahead and double click WAMP server. Wait for this to start up and become green. Once that becomes green, here's where you can decide. You can either use your files from last time, or you can use my files. If you want to use your files, you should have your flash drive plugged in, and your files we're going to copy it to the WW folder. If you're using my files, you can get them from the classroom drive Z. So I'm going to assume you're going to use my files. That's what I would recommend, just to keep it easiest. So let's go to the classroom data, drive Z. Z is in Zebra, and let's go to our class, Campus WordPress. On the 9th, two days ago, I saved a copy of my files. That's what I mean by my files. My website is right there. If you're using your files on your flash drive, you need to have a folder with your files, the zip file and the PHP file, in a folder if you're using your site. I'm going to use my site from the network folder. So I'm going to copy the 509 folder. I'm going to right-click Copy. And then in another window, I'll open Computer. I'm going to copy 509. I'll open the C drive. We'll open the WAMP folder. Open the WWW folder. So I'm copying Tuesday's project into the WW folder. If you're using your project, from your flash drive, you need to copy your folder project into the WW folder. It's got to be in a folder. If you just put your zip file and your installer PHP file like this, it won't work. It's got to be in a folder. So you can make a folder called My Site and put your zip and PHP in there. <coughs> so I'm going to copy mine. Question? Can you put them in the one folder? in the WAMP folder, in the WWW folder. Yeah. Alright, so depending on how big the site is, depending on how many pictures and videos and all of that, it may be a big file. It didn't take too long for me to copy mine, but I've got it in the network folder. I mean, I've got it in the WW folder now, in the WAMP folder. So on my handout, I had said, okay, we need, to start, we need to start WAMP, we need to copy the folder, we need a database. So we need to set up a database again to, to bring that back to life. Remind me, how do we create a database? PHP My Admin. Yes, so go ahead and open your web browser. You can click the W and go to localhost. Click once on the little W, click localhost, and go to the address localhost slash PHP my admin. Actually, there's a shortcut. When you're looking at localhost, so when localhost loads up, on the bottom left corner, you'll see PHP my admin. So instead of typing it manually, you can uh, just click down there. That's the same as typing localhost slash PHP my admin. When you're viewing the localhost configuration screen, I'm going to see PHP my admin. I copied my project folder, so it tells me you've got a project. If you're files are not in a folder, you won't see this. You won't, it won't say you've got projects. You, they need to be in a folder. So go to PHP My Admin. Yes? What is the before? Uh, you open the local host. So click on the W and then select local host. Yeah. And then? And then click PHP My Admin. PHP? PHP My Admin. So inside of the PHP My Admin, we'll go to Databases. Click on Databases at the top. We're going to create a database. We're keeping it simple. We're calling the database WordPress. 
Yes. So WordPress is the name of the uh, of the file, uh, the name of the uh, database. Database. Yes. Okay. Yep. WordPress is the name of the database where all of the pictures will get saved, all of the products and prices and the and the theme. Everything about the site saves in the database. So once we're inside of this database screen, we'll create a database with any name. We're going to go with WordPress. We then want to click Create. Click it one time, and then you'll see on the left side, we've got a new database. We've got a database called WordPress. We had these other databases before. I've got a new one called WordPress. And when we type WordPress and we click Create, and this still shows here, usually it goes away, but it stays. If it stays, that's fine. You should see you've got a new WordPress database. Okay, so we, we're running WAMP. We've got the folder in the right place. We've made a database. Next step, we're going to go to the installer file. So in the browser, localhost slash the name of the folder project slash installer PHP. The name of the folder project is 2017-0509. Last time it was 0904 because we were working with a folder from two, two weeks ago, last week. Installer.php. Every day at the end of our class meeting, I do a backup of the site and I save it with the date. So that's why that changes every time because the folder in the WAMP folder has got the date from that day. When we make today's file, which will have 511, and we come back next Tuesday, we'll type localhost slash 2017 because it's a new folder. Right. So you, you, you get the date on the last folder that you... Exactly. So you see here in the WW folder, right. I've got a folder called there, 509, and that's what we have to access there, 509. All right, so we've got duplicator screen waiting for us. Uh, we've got, if, if it didn't show up, if it says error or not found or whatever, you probably misspelled something. Check your spelling, installer.php, and check the date. Nothing we really need to do here except turn on, I have read the notifications. So turn on, I've read all of that. I've read and, ex I have read and accept all terms. Click next. take a little moment and then it'll ask us for some of the information the name of the database the user account which is root here it is so it's asking us here what do you want to do we're going to connect to a database and remove anything that might have existed leave that we're connecting to the host of localhost leave that of course we're on localhost we're connected to a database i just created a database called WordPress, so we'll type that. And my handout reminds you that user is root and password is what? Nothing. Empty. Blank. To confirm this, I would recommend click test database. We should get a bunch of greens that say success. We are on our on the right track. If any of these say fail, let me know, but most likely you misspelled something. If they all say success, you can go to next. Let me take a look. Click click next, click yes, and then let that go. If it click if one of them say fail, let's check.
this way. Now, this screen here, uh, we've seen it a few times. This is just saying, uh, here's the old version of the site, and here's the new version. If I was taking this from my local host into Bluehost, it would show you're going from local host to Bluehost, victor.com. But we're keeping it on the same, where it's still going to be all in local host. So that's just kind of informational. See, if you're using my file, my site, it's going to say Victor's Bakery. You can keep it or you can change it if you want. Question? The URL uh, point to the, uh, the web, right? And then from the web, the path, it would be directed to the C drive. 
Is that, is that sort of. If, if it was on the real web, URL would say victor.com. So that never goes to the real web? HTTP? Not right now because we're running it all on WAMP. If I had uploaded this to a real server, then the URL would have an address of a real server. So this, all this is going down to the, to the Just on your computer, on WAMP, yeah. On, on one of the last days, I'll show the whole process of putting it on a real server. But right now, we're, we're going to work on, a, on our WAMP, which is not a real server, uh, to learn how it works. And then eventually, we'll put it on a real server. So you can keep, uh, you can keep it Victor's Bakery if you'd like, or change it if you'd like. Let me show you one more thing here I haven't mentioned. Under Options, if you already went past the screen, that's OK. But under Options, here's a spot where you can also add another user account. We have the user account I've set up before of admin with password. If you wanted to create, at this step, a different user account, you could do it here too. So this is useful in, in a few cases. Uh, I've worked with clients where they had us, they hired us to work on a website that already existed. One of the first things we do then is make a copy of their site and bring it down to one of our local host WAMP computers to work on it. We don't want to work on the original site of the client on the real internet. So when they hire us, we make a copy with Duplicator, and then we download it and use it on one of our computers. At this moment then, I would create a separate account to not change their original account. They give us, of course, their login and password to get into it, but then I prefer early on to create a brand new account here for us to edit their site. When we're done editing the site, we can delete the account if we want. So you don't have to change anything here, but just make a note. Here's a place where you can make another admin account. Yes? When you mentioned that you change, you can change the title of the account. Mm -hmm. If you change it to another name, does the password and the username continue to be OK for the new name that you put up there on, on title? That's different. Uh, title is just the title of the site. But what I was saying here is this is a new user account. No, it's still going to be the same website. It's going to be based on the one I gave you, Victor's Bakery. But if you call this Ricardo's Bakery, yeah. it's going to be it's going to be the same site of my site, but it's just going to have your name. That's the only real change. Okay. Yes. So there's two different people going into the site making changes. Is there a log for that? Is there a way to see how many times people go in? Yes. Uh, WordPress keeps track of changes that are made to pages and posts and most things, and you will be able to see history of what has been changed and who has changed it. Uh, and you'll be able to revert and such if people make weird changes. You'll be able to um, keep track of all of that. So I'm not going to make any new accounts. This is just informational. All of this stuff, don't even, don't even look at that. That's way too advanced. But here, under the username, you could make a new account. I'm not changing anything, so just click Next. <coughs> All right, so we've seen this screen before. We have basically two things we should do, even though there's four buttons. Show report really only matters if it does show something about warnings or errors. I don't have anything there, so I can ignore that one. Test site, I'm going to ignore it just for time's sake. Uh, I don't want to spend time testing my site right now. It should work. It's a basic site. On your own site, if you do this, <coughs> you should take a time to test it and check that your links work and nothing was, was changed oddly. What we do want to do is save the permalink and security cleanup. So first we'll click the first button, Save Permalinks. This is going to ask us to log in with uh, the account that, I, that we've used before, which is what? Admin. admin. And what's our great password? Password. password. So log in with admin and then password. All lowercase. These are, of course, the worst usernames and passwords to have, but just for us to be able to log in, it's very basic. And those things can be changed later on. Admin and password. It remembered that we had set up post name. Great. But we should still simply click Save at the bottom. 
If this was set to anything else, I would recommend post name and save. But remember, if we want to post name, go ahead and save. So this was the permalink settings. It opened a new tab in the web browser. I can close that tab to go back to duplicator. I'm done with the save permalinks step. The next one that we care to do is security cleanup. Let's click security cleanup. This is going to say, okay, you will now be redirected to the cleanup page. Select delete reserved files to remove the old installer files. So that opens another tab. It takes us here and we click delete reserved files. That's going to clean out the installer file, so we can close the duplicator screen now since we just deleted it. It cleaned up these backup files and data things and other things. However, um, um, it is recommended to remove your archive, the zip file, from the root of your WordPress. You will need to do it manually. They used to delete it for us, and I liked that, but for recently, for some reason, the duplicator plugin changed, and now the zip file does not delete itself. Uh, I would like that it does, but it doesn't. So what, what it's saying there is you need to delete the zip file, which is what my handout says. We've done all of these steps up to this point on resurrecting the site, and I have my, my step 8, return to the WW folder, and delete the remaining zip file. Can you track to step 6 and step 7? 6 and 7? Yep. Yeah. You follow the instructions. Uh -huh. On screen? Um, well, which, where? I already did it. Can we? And here we send, uh, I save permanently. Perfect. Then, then you go back and do security cleanup. Oh, security. Mm -hmm. We ask a question, local set. Uh, yeah, so let me just continue to find that. Yes, we have the points. No, I already did that screen. I already did it. Okay. And then click this one. Here? Yeah, that's what my handout says. So I deleted the files. Now I need to go back to the WW folder and delete delete the zip file. So I still have it open in my other window here to open up back into the 0509 folder and what it's telling us is it did not delete for us the zip file, the one with this zip and the huge name. So it's still there. We don't want it anymore. We don't need it anymore. So you can delete the zip file. Just press delete on the keyboard. So that would be on our... Um, on the WAMP folder. On the, on the WAMP folder. Only on the WAMP. Not, don't delete it from your USB. On the WAMP folder. So on the C drive, on the WAMP folder, in the WW folder, in the project folder, 0509, I deleted the zip file. We don't need it anymore. That was my step eight. Um, what is that call that file you deleted? It had some weird uh, long gibberish name. In my case, it was 2017-0510, Victor's Bakery, 15A79, blah, blah, blah. So it's just the one with the little zip icon. The WAMP is in the WW folder? In the W folder, in the project folder. Oh, in the project folder. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, the is that uh, I, I can go to my uh, one folder, mm -hmm. and then I click on the W folder, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to delete the 2017 Nope, that will delete your whole site. Go into that folder, uh -huh. and then you'll see the zip file. You'll see. Uh, you should. You should have one that's got a huge name like that with the zip. Mm -hmm. 
you take drive, and then you go into that. And the reason why we do that is because it won't be confusing that if I'm following that is how we do it on the other. It's basically the it's basically a copy of your site. So now you've got a copy of your site in your site. You've got two copies of the site. So that's why we delete it. So now you have one copy of the site. But I go through the line I keep on keeping it. So once we delete the zip file, uh, this uh, completes the steps of resurrecting the site. Basically, my handout here uh, says, okay, we've got a newly set resurrected site. You can test it. Uh, I put 1 instead of 11 there, but it's done. So this is done uh, resurrecting the site, but we have one more thing. We have to once again set up the rewrite module. Um, every time we turn these computers off, they forget all of the settings. Remember last on Tuesday what we did? We went into the WAMP icon and we turned on the rewrite module. We have to do it again every time we come in because these computers forget. That's why I have it here. So let's do these next steps. Click once on the WAMP server icon, the little green W here. Go to Apache and Apache modules and turn on rewrite module. We need to remember to do that so that our links are not broken. That's the point of that. We are, uh, we're going into the W in the Apache, in the Apache modules, and it's a big list, but you need to scroll down. And we're going to find rewrite module, not, not request module, rewrite module. Turn on rewrite module, the green W, change colors. I think it goes from red, uh, orange to green eventually, so make sure it goes back to green. It is green. So we're going to do these steps when we bring the site back to life again on Tuesday, and then I plan on next Thursday for you to do this on your own. Uh, it is a few steps, but I have it all written down. We've done it together a couple of times. We'll do it together again next time, but then at a certain point you're going to need to do this on your own. We're going to come into the class, you're going to set yourself up ready to go, you know, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, we're ready to go. I'm not going to walk us step by step every single day we're here. You'll need to kind of understand this on your own, to do it on your own at some point. I won't be able to, you know, help you figure out your problem when I'm not around. So doing it in class on your own next week hopefully helps you to understand how it works. One last thing, then we'll go on. Here I have a note that... Um, we're using the free version of Duplicator, and it works really well. It makes a copy of our site, it lets us transfer our site, bring the site back to life, all of that, for free. But there is a version of Duplicator Pro, a Duplicator called Duplicator Pro, which gives you a few more uh, options. 
and it actually works better on larger sites. If your site is over 100 megabytes, Duplicator Pro seems to work better. You have many more files that Duplicator needs to compress. So the free version I've seen, personally, that the free Duplicator version on big sites doesn't work as well. I recommend Duplicator Pro. And I've got a link there, an affiliate link, that if you follow that, you will get a discount on buying Duplicator. I believe it's around $30 to $40 one-time cost. You don't have to do it, and the free one works fine. But I have found, working for some clients that have big websites, Duplicator Pro works better for them. Just some information for you if you'd like. So I'm done with that handout. I'm done with the duplicator screen. I'm going to visit my site. The site is back exactly where we left it with the categories and tags and so forth. So I can pause there. Is everyone on the right track? Anyone need a little help? That's okay. If anyone came in a little later, I'm going to sign in on the sheet at the front of
Thank mm -hmm. you. So we've got a site that has uh, been uh, resurrected. It's exactly as we left it before. Let's continue then with our tasks of, uh, of the class. Let me refer back to the syllabus. And we've got a few more things, plugins and other cool things. And then eventually we're going toward uh, e-commerce. We're still getting the basics, basic concepts of WordPress how it works, creating pages and posts and such. We play with themes a little bit. We need to talk about plugins and widgets and other things. So according to our goals in the syllabus. Let's see. Okay, we can talk about users and roles too for a moment. Editing themes, media. Talked about static home page. We'll talk about widgets. Okay, let's uh, take a quick look uh, to check this one off. Users and roles. When we were resurrecting the site, there was a spot for us to um, there was a spot for us to create a new account. But usually, we create the account in WordPress. So wherever you're at, let's go back to the dashboard. We have a whole section called Users. If you click once on Users, this is going to look like almost every other screen, like posts and pages. List all the users, add a new user, or edit your own profile. We've got one user so far, admin, which I created a while ago. If I wanted to change anything about this account, you see you can uh, click Edit, and it'll show you all of that. So that's the same as going to your profile. Let me show you something interesting that I like to tell you uh, here. So just click your profile. There's various options that you can change them. They make sense what you need to change. But here's something that I like to tell people. The default design of the dashboard is right here, default, the, these colors. If you click on one of these other colors, it doesn't change anything on your site. It just changes your dashboard colors. You might say, well, that looks pretty, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. The reason that, that I like to point this out is, personally, when we work with clients, if we are working on a copy of their site in the WAMP server, I like to change the dashboard to blue to show that this is a safe version that we have a copy of on our WAMP server. And when we upload it to the real server, I like to change it to the sunrise so that that red stands out that lets me know this is the real server, this is the real account on the real internet. Be careful what you're going to change. So it's completely optional, and there's not a lot of color choices, but personally, I like to set it to blue when we're in WAMP, and I like to set it to red when we're in, or sunrise when we're on a real server. Just as a very quick, as a very quick indicator that be careful, we're on a real internet site. Exactly. There yes. are four categories in each of this color. What does it mean? Well, these little four categories, not quite categories, they're just different colors. This color shows up right here, and then this color shows up right here. So it's just these colors are showing up in different parts, like the text color and such. We can't change it, we can just select it. So it means that the 
trend is going to be blue, but the alphabet is going to be something else? Well, the theme of dashboard, not the theme of your site. This doesn't affect your site, just your dashboard. So I'm going to write notes today as usual, and I'll add that in my notes. Recommendation. Change your profile dashboard color based on how it can help you. Example, uh, running your site on WAMP set to blue. Running on GoDaddy or Bluehost or wherever online set to red or sunrise or any colors you want of course but for me it stands out right away okay I logged in I'm blue I'm on WAMP I'm safe I logged in it's red I'm on the server I'm on the real server if I make any changes they will show up for real and people will see them Okay, so other things that are on this screen that might be useful. This is the place, uh, we'll see this once we uh, add a couple more users. Right now, admin is the, is the name of this account. It can be changed to something else. So you know, if I have this set as John S Smith, Smoth, if I have this set to John Smith uh, or anything, then what will display on screen about who made changes. It could be admin, John, John Smith, whatever. So you can customize this and it will display this, who made that post or who added that page so you can keep track of it. Here's a part to add or change email, website, biographical information. This might show up on the theme. Uh, if it's activated, depending on the theme. And when you post content on your site, you can have a picture shown about who posted it. So a couple of things. You can then click Update to change those settings. It it does yes. If you change any of this, it will change your steps when you when you use duplicator when you set it up again. I mean, the admin we can change admin as well. Yeah. We cannot change username of admin, but we can change the name that shows up on screen to something else. So the next step. And then we want to go back to the website, we should get admin and password. Yes. It doesn't affect uh, if, you, if, if any name here. If you, if you, well, because we cannot change username, it doesn't affect. No. And if you change password here, it will affect. But I'm saying, let's not change it. And what's the uh, after the new password? So, Down here? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Log out everywhere. Uh, it says, well, if you're if you're using more than one computer and you want to secure it, and you you can click log out, and it will log you out on other computers so that you're only logging in on one computer. So it recommends it like here being in the public labs so that your password is not saved on this computer. So that's just to log you out. At the same time. Possible two, three admins both on the same website? Sort of. Um, two or three admins logging with the same time, that causes some problems. That's why I would recommend, and we should all do this, let's look at add new. I would recommend instead make an admin number one, admin number two, admin number three, and then different people can sign in at the same time and make the changes. I would not use one account to log in three times. I would make three accounts. And they have all the responsibility on the site. They can change. If we do, if we check here. So let's let's all look at this. If we go to add new, we can create admin number two, etc. And then we have roles. 
if we set that to also administrator role, then they have the full control of what the admin has. And I don't recommend that. Only give people administrative access if you, if you really trust them. Because if you give them full power, they could remove you from your own site. The second level is a very good level. Editor. It goes from weakest to strongest. So editor, I would recommend if you add other people to help you on your site. Editor. Don't give anyone else admin. Maybe your spouse, if you trust them. But everyone else, uh, I would do editor as the, as the account. So, recommendation. Create more people, more users. Create more users to help you edit your site. But be very careful about adding or giving them administrator role. Editor role is good for most users. Because I, I haven't exactly seen it very recently, um, but that, that does happen sometimes. That a disgruntled employee, you know, I gave all my employees administrator role I wasn't thinking, and I gave everyone administrator, and then a disgruntled employee is fired, and then I check on my site and suddenly it's defaced and messed up because they went in and had the full power and they did something to my site. So adding a new user, it has a couple of requirements, make a password, send them the information, and then they're going to log in with their own password, and they have a role of editor. Here you can control all the administrators, all the users here. You see it here, all the users. So when you create different users, they will all be listed here. You can then select them and remove them or make other changes. And you can just block uh, somebody or somebody, leave the company. Or leave yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Under this uh, all users screen. All right, so that's, uh, that's users there. Um, one place where we kind of see it, if, I, if you look under posts, only we only have one user. So under posts is where it would show us. Here is who authored the page. Here is who created it. If we further view the page, it will then also show us who made changes. So just to check this, we won't see too much, but let's go to all posts. And we'll see who authored it, who created it. And then if you uh, edit a post, to check who has made changes, you will see a box over here under Publish. There is status, uh, and we have revisions. So we can see what changes have been made and who has made the changes. We can also use revisions to revert, to go back. To, to go back in time, like undo, and bring back a different version of what was changed. And this works on posts and pages. Like if I edited the About page, it saves, WordPress automatically saves revisions. So useful note. Every post, page, most things, products, uh, has a revision, revisions uh, screen to see changes and revert changes if necessary. The way that works is if you want to look at uh, browse, I've got three versions of, of me editing the Easy Bake. You may have one or two. Well, everyone, I guess everyone should have three because you've copied my site. But I've got three. If I click there. What happens is um, the screen is a little confusing the first time you see it. But what we have here is um, this is the one I worked on previously. This is the current version. 
This is what is live right now. This is the latest, the last version before that. We're looking at at this point in history. The latest, the second latest. And it'll show us that the changes that were made were down here. I, uh, on that previous version, I had written that. And on the last version, I added a link. Okay, I no longer want that link. I can, I can restore. I can restore a version. I can. Well, you click on the revision, or you click on Browse Revisions, and it'll show you all your revisions. Did you restore it? I, you can restore it. If you go back, it says Restore This Version. So there's that version, this version. So depending on which of these states you're at, you can restore. Restore this. So we're comparing. There's this old version, there's a new version, I want the old version, I click Restore. I go back a little further, I can restore the old version to the new version. I'm not going to, but if we wanted to, we could. So what's useful here is that WordPress keeps basically an unlimited number of revisions. So all of these changes that I make on various hours and days and years, they are stored there. And that's good and bad. It's good that it keeps a complete history of the changes. Auto save by admin, who made the change. That's good. But the bad thing about it is it's saving lots of copies of your pages, every page and every post. Later on, today, we'll talk about plugins. And there's a plugin to help us clean this up a little bit. I don't need a version from two years ago. I only need the last version. So we'll see a plugin a little later to help us clean up revisions and other things. I'll click return to editor. You can see that I think also if you look at pages. Uh, if we edited the about us page, you can go to pages, edit the about page. You'll also see that has, I guess we didn't have really any changes here. Yeah, there's nothing here. But if there were changes, you would have revisions on pages too. Posts, pages, products, etc. Let's do. Let's work a little bit with media. On the left side, click media. Media is the place where you store all your pictures and video and PDFs, PowerPoints, etc. We have a few picture samples that you can use just to practice this. The library, the media library is empty, so let's click Add New. At the top here, I'll click Add New. And, our, and then we can then click Select. The, the, the storage space that we have is limited by the hard drive of the computer. The computer is running WAMP, and if my computer has a gigabyte hard drive, that's how much space I have in my library. If my computer has a, a five terabyte hard drive, that's how much space I have on my, on my library. Although it does say here, individual files that I can upload are three megabytes. Individual files. It's kind of large for most files. I'm going to click Select Files. On the left side, we have a few sample pictures for you to practice. On the left side, if you look at Pictures, on the left panel, Desktop Libraries Pictures, Sample Pictures. You can practice selecting more than one picture if you want. You can upload them. I'm going to upload Koala, click Open. I've uploaded one, I'll upload another one. Penguins. I've uploaded two pictures. I can view the library as a list. 
or as thumbnail previews. In the old days, if I was making a website, I needed to create a folder on my site called Images. Then I would create another folder called, you know, Product One, and I would upload pictures there. Then I would create another folder called, you know, Profile Pictures, and upload pictures there. In the old days, I needed to create folders and a structure and keep track of it. Where did my picture go? I can lose it. In a modern way, like WordPress, uh, there's no folders. You just upload the files. The files will be listed there. I can search files. I can organize them by date and such. So they're all in one place. Sometimes that's convenient and sometimes not so convenient. I've worked with some sites that have lots of pictures and you have to scroll to find the right picture or search. But what will make this easier is after you upload a picture, click on one of the pictures. It previews the picture, the attachment, details. We have a little bit of basic editing we'll look at in a moment. A couple of uh, a bit of information. It's called koala.jpg, file size, dimensions, etc. This is where it's been uploaded to. Not really uploaded to a real server, but into our WAMP. Every picture has its own unique address. So if I were to eventually get victorsbakery.com and I uploaded a cake into my media library, it would have its own unique address. HTTP victorsbakery.com slash the date when I uploaded it and then the name of the file. So every one of your pictures has a unique address. We have title, caption, alt text description, and who uploaded it. So writing some notes here. The text that appears when you hover over a picture. Have you ever been to a website? You put your mouse on a picture and a little pop-up happens and it shows you a message? That's title. So whatever title you write there is what will appear when people hover. You can write as much as you want, and you can put capital letters and symbols and spaces and everything. Caption is the text that appears below the picture. If I add this picture to a blog post, I can put text below the picture. That's the caption. Caption. Text appears below. picture. Title doesn't appear until you hover over it, and caption appears automatically. Alt text. This is one of the most important ones. Sometimes people call it alt tags. That's not quite what they're called, really. It's alt text. Alt text is alternative text. This is very important for SEO. Any of the other things here is not important for SEO. Alt text is important for SEO. Alt text, the text required for screen readers, helps your SEO. Now, you, you, you may not know this, but people that are completely blind can still go to websites, can still use websites. You might say, well, how can they do that? The web is so visual. I have to see what to click on. I have to see what I'm buying. Well, people that have a visual impairment oftentimes have a special computer or special software that reads to them what's on the screen. So if someone visits my website, Let's say they read, they come to my product here, and I'm blind. My computer would read to me various pieces of information about the picture. So if I write something in the alt text, this is what will be read to the person. 
if this was a product that I'm selling, I want to be able to sell my product to everyone. But people that are visually impaired would not be able to understand what this picture is. The screen reader is not smart enough to understand the picture. There's no perfect software that can understand a picture. You know, you can feed a picture into the smartest computers in the world and it might tell you, well, it's the Eiffel Tower, because that's a very common picture that it can be understood. But if I put a picture of my family reunion into the smartest computer, it won't know what it is. It'll know there's humans in the photo and there's like trees, but it won't know that's Aunt Gertrude sitting on the on the foyer. It won't know that I'm holding a, a can of Coke. It won't know things. So we need to add alt text. Maybe the computer understands it's an animal, but maybe it's a mouse. Maybe it doesn't understand what it is. So alt text is so important. Would you want to use more keywords there too in the description? Yes, but you do want it in, in human readable terms. Uh, for example, what I would do on this one, let's say this is for Victor's Bakery, this is a picture of our koala cake. So what I would write here is koala birthday cake. That has the keywords of cake, birthday, and so forth. I wouldn't just put a set of, a set of keywords that don't make sense. They, they should make sense as a human readable sentence. Now also, uh, this is part of uh, compliance. Uh, helps your SEO use real sentences. Use one real sentence. This is not the spot for you to write a whole paragraph. Use one real sentence with keywords. This is the concept known as accessibility. Compliance. In the U.S., uh, government websites are required by law to be accessible. Government websites are required to have a bunch of these things active, such as pictures with text. Now, I'm not going to make a government website. I'm making Victor's Bakery. But uh, this has become so commonplace that now you know non-governmental websites it's, it's almost assumed that you have this, and you will be penalized by the search engines that you don't have this. Alt text on your pictures. It's a little extra step that you should do to help your SEO, to help people, because um, I want everyone to be able to use my website and buy my product and such. So if I take a moment to add alt text to my pictures, that helps everyone. Myself, my client, I'm compliant, etc. Yes? Can the pictures in Google or same size without any permission? The short answer to that is no. I'll give you a longer answer in just a moment. But I would say don't use other, pe other people's pictures, but I'll give you a better answer in a moment. So continuing here, basically alt text is the most important one here. Title and caption is optional. And description. This is the description that appears basically only inside of your dashboard. It doesn't appear on the main website. So this is the description is just for your own records. Description not required, but useful for you. For yourself. Advice on images. Do not use images you did not create. That's the easiest way for me to say it because I can find a million images on a Google search or a Yahoo search, but if I didn't create the image, most likely I don't own the copyright, and therefore I'm breaking the law. So most images, most everything, most images, are governed by copyright, which is the right to copy something. Copyright. I made a photo of a cake. I took a photo of a cake, and I own it. I took the photo. I don't have to do anything special to register it. Sometimes people hear, well, you don't, you don't really copyright anything unless you 
unless you mail it to yourself, then it's official. No, in the US, since the 70s, the law has been that anything that has been fixed tangibly, you own the copyright. Even if you don't write the words copyright on it, if you write the words copyright and add a watermark and do all that special stuff, you are much more protected, yes. But as soon as you create something, you own the copyright. That means someone else that took a photo, or wrote a story, or made a song, they created it, they have a copyright. They have the right to copy it, to sell it, to make money. So the short answer is with anything related to the internet, really, do not use anything that you did not create. And yes, there is the idea of fair use and other sorts of things that I'll talk about in a moment. Question? So if three people take a picture of the same object, mm -hmm. each one has a copyright in that picture that they took it? Yes. And how can you prove that it's the same picture, but Oftentimes, a picture, as soon as you take it with, your, with most modern cameras, it saves a lot of metadata. It saves special information inside of the file of the image, which can be used to prove who created it. So it can be traced. It can be traced. If I take a photo with my camera right now, it'll mark that it was, it was photographed with a Moto G. If you took it with, with your own photo, it'll say with your own Samsung or iPhone or whatever. So there is a way to trace it back to the originator. Usually. Mm -hmm. So for example, so so what's that? Yeah. Picture of what? Can you use your own camera to take a picture like that? Possibly. I would not take a I would not take a picture of someone else's picture, no. <laughs> but taking your own pictures, yes. And this is a deeper discussion that first I'm gonna say I'm not a lawyer. So what I'm saying here is what I understand and what I've learned, but I'm not the ultimate authority on all of these things, but I'll give you lots of good advice. Question? So this picture, if you use in your website, for example, mm -hmm. is it legal or illegal? The, the short answer is no. Really what you want to do is use as many of your own pictures, create your own pictures. The problem is, I don't have a good camera, I don't know how to take a photo. So let me show you this website. There are some websites because obviously I can find millions of pictures on Google, on being on, on Yahoo. There are websites that dedicate themselves to giving you free pictures, free high quality pictures that are safe for you to use and legal for you to use. One of them is here, pixabay.com. This is one website, it doesn't have you know, a million pictures of cats, maybe it only has a hundred, but I'll find the right picture that I need. I've got Victor's Bakery, I need a picture of a cupcake, I can't take a photo, but maybe I'll find a picture here. I don't have 10 million cupcake pictures like I can find on Bing, I only have 12. But hopefully one of the ones I find there works. When my company gets hired to make websites for clients, one of the, off one of the services we offer is to take photos. We take all the photos for them, we give them the copyright, we have a contract, we take the photo, it's their product, even though we took it, we have the contract, it's their product, their photo. For some of us that don't have this resource, there's one like Pixabay. Yes? Can you explain the description again? The description is just optional and it is like bookkeeping. It's only for yourself. No one else sees it. It's not on the main site. Uh, so it's it's just for your own notes. For your own notes, and basically. It doesn't help the SEO. No. Thank you. Victor, I'm just one moment. Uh, you go to these free uh, pictures, mm -hmm. but you still have to disclose. It depends. It depends. This one, no. This site. There's other sites that have different rules. Other sites say, these pictures are free, but make sure you put a credit. This one is completely one of the most open ones I've seen. You download it, completely for you to use, no credit required. What I really like here also is that they are high quality. A lot of other sites give you a free version, but it's really small. Not good quality. This one, if I search for cupcake, I'm going to get some results. I get 658 results, not 658 million results. But these are good photos. They're high-quality photos. I can click. I can download. They're completely public domain. This is, they've, they've given up their copyright. They've put it to the public. I can download various sizes, even a super high-quality size ready for print. Those are harder to find on a regular Google search. So this is why I recommend this site instead of doing a search anywhere else. Nice. So I, know, I heard another, yes? Um, my side screen for the picture does not look like yours. It's not editable. It says save, it just... 
coming to you. All right, so I will um, show people this site, pixabay.com. You can go to it and search and download on your own. It's it's pretty straightforward. Is it any more like this? Is it what? Like, like this site? Any more? Uh, yes, let me, uh, let me check my notes here. But uh, definitely, so, okay, advice on images. Do not use images you did not create. Most images are governed by copyright. Um, I'll say uh, don't uh, use Google, Bing, Yahoo uh, to search. Uh, instead, use a site dedicated uh, to, to copyright free images, such as pixabay.com. Another one is called wikimedia.org. You might have heard of Wikipedia, but Wikipedia is part of a larger organization, Wikimedia. Under Wikimedia, you can go there and also find images that are okay for you to use. Yes? This is how they make money. They have all of these free images, but then they have partnerships with other companies. So I like that picture, but it's actually not one that you get out of Pixabay. It's from a sponsor. So you click and follow there, and it's going to go to someone else's site. So I would recommend just skip the first row. The first row was sponsored. Start with the next row, and all of these are OK for you to download and use. Excuse me, how do you move from pixabay.com photos to other site? It's a few steps. You have to click the photo. You have to then click download the photo and choose a size. And then when you download it, you go back to your library and then you click you click add. You upload it. So you have to download it off of Pixabay and then you have to upload it into your site. And bring it from the file that we have downloaded. Mm -hmm. There is no way to just No, there's no direct connection. You have to download from one and then upload to the other. So let's see the other one, wikimedia.org. Um, where is it at? Oh, uh, wik uh, furthermore, wikimedia.org, and then you go to Wikimedia Commons. Wikimedia, then Wikimedia Commons. So Wikipedia has been around over 10 years. Wikipedia is the online encyclopedia, uh, and it has various other projects, um, such as news, and a dictionary, wiktionary, books, free books. But here on wikimedia.org, you can go to Wikimedia Commons, and this is another site where you can search pictures, <laughs> pictures and other content, sounds, and video. It's a collection of 38 million freely usable media to which anyone can contribute or use. I'll put the direct link on my on my notes. What's that? It is because that's the big problem that a lot of comp a lot of people have. Um, they think that if they just search for uh, online, I find it and I can use it. We we have this idea that just because it's online, it's free for us to use. And no, it's you know we can say that yeah, this is worth here two hundred dollars. This thing has a value because it's a thing, but a picture has a value, a sound has a value, a website has a value. And it's been copyrighted, most likely. So when we go to the right place, we can find the right content. Another tip. Search online with keywords 
public domain or um, royalty free or um, stock images public domain. That's the big one. I could use a Google search and search cupcakes public domain and I may find a picture that's okay. I still don't recommend it unless you, you, you're you careful because sometimes the results that show up are not completely always correct. So instead of doing this, go to these sites, and there's a few other ones, I can't think of them right now. I'll, I'll check my notes. But if you go to these two sites, these are the sites that you're safe. Whatever you get from there should be safe for you to use on any project. Sometimes some sites say pictures are free, and then in small text, for non-commercial purposes. Victor's Bakery is a commercial purpose. I'm trying to sell cupcakes, and I want to use that picture. Commercial purpose. So I'm then breaking their rules. So the, these places here are free for any use, even commercial purposes. Victor, would you mind going to Wikimedia Commons to search for any particular, like, cupcakes in San Francisco? Easter cupcakes, savory cupcakes, Halloween cupcakes? Let's see, Halloween cupcakes. Here we go. I found a bat and a cat cupcake. And I can click the download button and then use it on my site. Chocolate pumpkin cupcake filled with cranberry curd and topped with cinnamon buttercream. Mm, Halloween cupcake. Order five dozen cupcakes. So you can search on Wikimedia at the top and you'll get different results. Mm -hmm. Only 54 results here, but again, I, I don't need 5,000 results um, for most things. And if it's my own product, I should take a photo. Now, that's not the most best photo. It looks like someone took a photo on their cell phone and it's okay. Most people, you can take your own photos. The big trick with that is light. Uh, like if I'm trying to take a photo of my product right here, I'm going to put it down right here and take a photo. It's going to be bad. Even though we think there's enough light, there isn't. I have these lights turned off. I should turn them on and I'll get better light on my product. I could try flash, but flash is often pretty bad because of how harsh it, it how bright it is. So if I were to move this where the light is at and take the photo, I probably will do an okay photo or hire someone that knows how to do it or find one from one of these sites. So regarding images, let's take a break and I'll mention a couple more things regarding images, like editing your image and such. It's about uh, it's about 7.25. We'll take a break until 7.35 and then we'll go on.